Even the ethno-linguistic group that a guy belonged to is called the Akan people. Why is that important? Akan is the name of the son of Carmi, the son of Judah, an Israelite, who in the book of Joshua was the source of the Israelites' failure to conquer Jericho. Then there is the Ashanti, also a member of the Akan. Ashan was the name of one of the towns in Judah. Ashanti, meaning the people of Ashan. The Ivory Coast is an Akan member as well. Well, the Ivory Coast was called at one time Cote d'Ivry. Ivry is the Greek phonetic spelling of the Hebrew word Eber, meaning Hebrew. Therefore, the coast was actually called the Hebrew coast, Cote d'Ivry. Okay, well, let's say that we need a little more proof because it's actually called the Ivory Coast, right? You know, like elephant tusks. I get it. That's what they're really known for, right? Well, eventually, Ivory was pronounced Ivory. See, even the origin of the English word ivory comes from the Latin word eber. Eber? Get it? Plain enough? Well, let's cap it with this. See, the same territory was also known by another name. Gofo di Judeu. This quote is from the Royal Geographical Society with the British Institute of British Geographers. Verses 16. Golfo du Judeu, the Jews' Bay, the Gulf of the Jews. Castillo, guided by Pimento, identifies it with Kalango Bay, and this I accept. Although the Golfo du Judeu of Bahamines globe seems to represent the Wango Bay seems to represent Luango Bay. Golfo du Judeu, the Gulf of the Jews. So the coast of the Hebrews was also known as the coast of the Jews. Hmm. See, amongst the Hebrews, excuse me, the Ivorians, or another ethnic group. Do you remember the Ga people we spoke about that came to West Africa with the Dangwe people? Gad and Dan? Well, amongst the Ivorians are the Yakuba people. Remember, the Israelites are the sons of the patriarch Jacob, who Yah or God changed his name to Israel, but his birth name was Jacob, which in ancient Hebrew is pronounced Yakub or Yakob. The Yakuba people are also known by another name, Dan. Exodus 1 1 through 4. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Now at this point, if you still have a question whether or not the Israelites are black or African, let's go to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Dan, a African people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me repeat that. Dan, a African people. Dan, also called Geo or Yakuba, an ethno linguistic group of people inhabiting the mountainous west central Cote d'Ivoire and adjacent areas of Liberia. The Dan belong to the southern branch of the Mende linguistic subgroup of the Niger-Congo language family. They originated somewhere to the west or northwest of their present lands, perhaps among the Menlinke. The Dan are closely related to the Gur, also spelled Niger or Gwer, to the south. Another Akan connection with the tribe of Gad is the Igbo people of Nigeria. The following quote is from ShavaIsrael.org, a European Jewish organization whose goal is to reunite lost Jewish tribes. Quote, the Igbo Jews of Nigeria who call themselves B'nai Israel are a part of a larger Igbo ethnic group. Most of the Igbo Jews live in an area which straddles the river Niger near the Ambara states. 
The Igbo Jews are said to have migrated from Syria, Portugal, and Libya to West Africa around 740 CE. It is claimed that the initial immigrants were from the biblical tribes of Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. Later, they were joined by more Jewish immigrants from Portugal and Libya in 1484 and 1667 respectively. Some of the Igbo Jews claim that the river Sambadion, beyond which the lost 10 tribes were dispersed by the Assyrians, is in Africa. Now, in this quote, it says that the Igbos claim that the river Sambadion is in Africa. Were they the ones who claim this? Is this true? Well, let's take a look. But first, I know you're asking the question, what the heck is the river Sambadion and what significance does it have? Well, this river is connected to a writing in the Jewish Talmud, the holy book of European Jewry, which speaks of the location to which the lost 10 tribes went after they were taken into slavery by the Assyrians. So let's see what was written. Sanhedrin 94a. The Gemara asks, where did Sennacherib exile the ten tribes? Marzuthra says, he exiled them to Africa. And Rabbi Hania says, to the Salug Mountains. So this wasn't a narrative that the Igbo stated. This actually was written and recorded in the holy writings of Jewish sages over the centuries. Also, how would the Igbo even know about that information without access to the Talmud? So if they knew this was in the Jewish writings, why are they painting the narrative that the connection with Africa, the river Sabadion and the 10 tribes was something that the Igbos proposed out of thin air? Then there's even the famous Ashkenazi rabbi, Rashi, Rabbi Shlomo Yasaki. And one of his many commentaries on the Talmud added, quote, the 10 tribes went to one place, Africa. Then again, there's a letter of Rabbi Elijah ben Salman Zalman, also known as Vilna Gaon, one of the most familiar and influential names in the rabbinic study since the Middle Ages, who wrote on the subject stating the following, quote, a letter sent by the elders and rabbis of the Ashkenazi community in the land of Israel to Ben Moshe and the Ten Tribes. Written and presented by the great sage, knowledgeable in the hidden and revealed, the great light, our teacher, Israel, author of the book, Taken Hatton, the appointed head and leader of the Ashkenazi community, known as the Midrash Perusum, in the city of Zaf. May it speedily be rebuilt in our days. Amen. Thus, send the dwellers of the land of Israel who abide by the Torah of Moses, which is a gift, an inherited portion, to our brothers, the children of Israel, the sons of Isaac, the sons of Abraham, who revealed the belief in Hashem. They are our holy and pure brothers, the righteous upon whom the world rests. Then Benai Moshe, the servant of Hashem, who dwells across the river Shabbaton, also known as Sabbatian, also known as Sabbatian, and who pledge allegiance to the king, the king of Israel, who sits upon a mighty throne and who rules over the ten tribes, whose settlement is in the land beyond the rivers of Nubia, who count according to their banners, the tribe of Dan, of Naphtali, of Gad and Asher. The tribe of Dan, of Naphtali, of Gad and Asher. The tribe of Ishakar, who understand the movements of the celestial bodies, constantly involved in Torah study, and the tribe of Zebulun, encamped at Mount Friot. So were the Igbos making up claims of Israelite heritage? Or was the Ashkenazi community aware of the Igbos' Israelite heritage for centuries? 
This might be why Professor Dr. Alfred Bodenheimer, Professor of Jewish Literature and Religious History at the University of Basel, who received a traditional Jewish education and conducted Talmud studies at Yeshiva University in New York and at Yeshiva Hamavadar in Israel, stated, quote, British rabbis were already aware in the 1840s that there might be descendants of the ten tribes in the Niger Delta. That is, even before the process of Jewish acceptance of better Israel or the Ethiopian Jews began. Evidently though, the Ebus, who today number 20 or 30 million people, would be political and demographic dynamite. Given the sheer number of potential Jews of Nigeria, it is no accident that Israeli authorities are hesitant to act even as non-Orthodox rabbis from the U.S. are undertaking full-scale missionary tours among them. The Igbos even have a similar migration route narrative as the Ga people of Ghana. According to Shavai Israel, it went as follows. Quote, the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Ethiopia, Kenya and the Sudan through the trade and travel of North African Jews within the West African kingdoms of Mali, Songhai, and Karambarnu. According to the accounts from explorers of the region, several of the rulers of the Songhai Empire were said to be of Jewish origin, though the Jews traveling with Kael Tamashik, Torag, trade caravans, came from various parts of Northeast Africa into West Africa. A 9th century Hebrew traveler named Eldad ben Mali, also known as Eldad the Danite, said that his tribe Dan migrated from the land of Israel as to not take part in the civil war at the time of Jeroboam's secession and were residing in the land of Havilah beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. According to Eldad, Three other tribes in addition to Dan, Natali, Gad, and Asher, as mentioned above, were with him. These had joined in the times of Sennacherib. Eldad wrote that the evil Jews in Africa had an entire body of scriptures, except for the book of Esther and Lamentations. They knew nothing of the Mishnah nor of the Talmud, but they had a Talmud of their own in which all the laws were cited in the name of the biblical Joshua. So let's look at this. Eldad the Danite said that the Ebos not only did not know the Talmud, but they didn't even own a copy of one. But they did have their own written Torah scrolls, aka the books of the Old Testament. So with that being true, how would the Ebos even know about the Jews being scattered to the river Sabbatia, a writing that's not even found in the entire 66 books of the Bible, Old and New Testament, a writing that only exists among the rabbinical writings of European Jewish sages, writings that the Ebos didn't possess nor had access to. The journey from the river Sabbatia to West Africa was not religious fantasy, but the oral tradition of their history. A fact confirmed 